Elizabeth Holmes is a Silicon Valley wonderkin who's received massive media coverage for a startup that promised to speed up how the world analyzes blood tests. Powerful men like Henry Kissinger and General Jim Mattis were her advisors, and actress Jennifer Lawrence is set to play her in an upcoming movie. But everything unraveled when the Securities and Exchange Commission accused her company, Theranos, of an elaborate deception that defrauded investors out of $700 million. So if Holmes was the darling of healthcare disruption, what more should we know about other companies now maneuvering to take over medicine in America? Dr. Josh Luke is a former hospital CEO and the author of a new book titled Health Wealth. Uh, welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So what is it at the core of the SEC complaint against Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos? From what I've read, and, and as you said, healthcare disruption right now is such a, a big deal, particularly coming out of Silicon Valley, who traditionally hasn't been too involved in healthcare. Uh, what happened with Theranos, from what I've read about the complaint so far, is they had this potential technology that was potentially going to be groundbreaking. The triple aim of healthcare, which the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, was based on, was based on three things. It was based on improving care, it was based on reducing cost, and improving uh, overall delivery. And so um, when you see a disruptive technology that can accomplish each of those th three things and improve overall health and at the same time improve quality, uh, people jump on it. What happened in this case, it looks like from the complaint, is uh, there was a little bit of, from what the complaint alleges of some nepotism. Her father had some very strong relationships, some, some people in high places that jumped on board before mm -hmm. they got the patents, before they got FDA approval. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that snowballs. And from what I read, it sounds like that's what happened. Mm -hmm. So Theranos investors lost hundreds of millions of dollars in the company. And I think people might be surprised to know the company is still in operation. Yeah. Um, why is investing in healthcare disruption such a risky thing? You know, that's a great question. And, and we could cite companies all over the country that have been through a series of these type of investigations and complaints and even charges that are still in operation and still doing quite well. That's something that just in the last few years, part of the Affordable Care Act actually uh, was the first time that a individual can be held criminally liable in some mm. of these cases. So until the last five years, that wasn't even an option. So I think they're moving more in the direction of holding people more personally liable for situations like this. And yet you see so much investment money continuing to go into this space because the yeah. payoff is potentially uh, huge if, sure. if something hits. If, if someone is promising a certain technology, but it doesn't actually deliver on that technology, do you have a recourse as an investor or later as a consumer? No, and I think that's what Silicon Valley's learned is that, that the healthcare industry, I was a hospital CEO for 10 years, I teach at USC now, and what I talk to my graduate students a lot about, because most of them work in hospitals now here in Southern California, is about ask yourself who the buyer is in healthcare. Because traditionally it was hospitals, but remember, hospitals were kind of the king of the healthcare delivery model for years, and then the Affordable Care Act said, hey, we're going to make you into insurers. We're not so focused on uh, lining the pockets of hospitals. We want to keep individuals healthy at home, which means they're now an insurance model. Mm. So hospitals are saying, hey, we used to write the check, but now we're only getting paid when somebody puts a head in a bed. And really it's transferring to, to the insurance model, which people call a risk entity in healthcare. And so insurance companies who are that risk entity are saying, well, wait a minute, we were doing this long before the Affordable mm. Care Act, so this isn't new to us. This has already been our business. So when people rush in with new technology, I think I would recommend first stop and say, hey, who will be the buyer? Because it's likely not the hospital. Hmm. Okay, we want to get your thoughts too on recent announcements of more affordable health care by big companies, Apple, yeah. Disney, Amazon. What do you think about that? So exciting uh, to hear those things. You know, consumerism is the term we're hearing a lot nowadays, Jessica, in healthcare because healthcare affordability, and the whole book I just wrote from Forbes Books is about uh, the fact that Americans can no longer afford health care. That's mm -hmm. actually the full name of the book is Health Wealth. Is health care bankrupting your business? In September, there'll be a follow-up. Is health care bankrupting your family? And it's all about one point, which is are you an engaged health care consumer? And that's the first question we all need to ask ourselves. When we go buy a house, we shop neighborhoods, we shop the number of rooms, we shop the school district. When we buy a car, we shop features. Why don't we do that when we're um, shopping for health care? And the reason is there's six words that I will allocate that to, which is don't don't worry, your insurance will pay for it. Right. Yeah. Those are really the six words that killed American health care. So when big companies like Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Disney step in and say enough is enough, our employees can't afford health care, we can't afford health care, this is an awesome sign that consumerism has arrived. Mm. All right, we'll be watching that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Once again, the book is titled Health Wealth, Nine Steps to Financial Recovery. Dr. Josh Luke is a healthcare futurist. 
and an adjunct of faculty member at USC Seoul Price uh, School of Public Policy. He also hosts the Health Wealth podcast and radio show, as well as a daily video minute on LinkedIn. Thanks for coming in. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having me. Appreciate